What's going on, Rodney Dow? What's going on, Mr. Gary Putton? How you doing? Man, I'm good. I'm waiting nice. to see who the who the first. I see Jim Lauer is watching. Right on. How's going, Jim? Jim? Is he first today? I think he might be. I see five on the box there, and yeah, yep. Very cool. Where's Shannon Weiss at? She's usually number one. I don't know. Maybe she's taking a nap. Is she taking a nap? She was out mowing, yeah. I think. Devin Vanderhoof is watching. Yeah. I know, Mr. Devin. How you doing, Devin? This is our little Sunday fun mess. <laughs> Sunday fun day. <clears throat> Speaking of naps, I took a nice nap yesterday afternoon. <laughs> right on. Oh, man, you mean both had to make a quick trip <laughs> down to uh, Texas for a wedding and got back and, uh, um, you know, uh, it was just, you know, the weekend just kind of blew by. I've been working on the car and getting it ready and uh, to go down to the radio roundup. And and uh, so it's been quite the week already. But um, but no, I'm excited uh, for what we got going on. I'm excited for who we're going to bring on today. And we'll talk a little about that in a second. Yep. But um, Kurt uh, and Shelley says, hi, boys. Hey, hey. Or Devin Vanderhoof. This is Devin. He says, hey, boys. How's it going? Good, good. Devin, maybe uh, sometime in the future here, we'll drag you on here and have some fun with you. Oh, yeah. Um, listen to a block. handful of podcasts. What's that? Yeah. We could talk small block fours. We could talk big block Chevys. Yes. Holly. Yeah. I mean, um, Holly. I've listened to some podcasts uh, that he's been on and stuff, and uh, yeah. he would be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, we can talk about English Bulldogs. Yep. Bulldogs. We can talk about. Bring Laura on and talk about Disney. Dude, and bacon. She's bacon. She's doing some bacon and stuff, ba like cooking bacon, not bacon like, uh, you know, pig bacon, but like yeah. she's bacon. Whatever she is, she's making it looks good. <laughs> mm. That's right. I have to get Gary down there for one of those drag and drive he puts on. Yeah. He, uh, he does, he's all business with his stuff. He does his super duper glued and prepped. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Yep. Good, good prep. Nice. nice. Let me know when I'm in. Hey, this is Devin's response to us talking about that. He says, let me know when I'm in. All Dude, right. thank you. Uh, thank you for that response. And uh, I know it'll be fun. We'll hit you up on that. Heck yeah, it's a lock. And speaking of like um, for this week, just talking through with you, Gary, um, you know, we've been trying to get uh, Stan a couple times to come on and, you know, just busy, didn't work out. And uh, we were talking to uh, Michael Hollis and, and Barrett as well, Green, because we're going to the radio roundup. Uh, I think we leave out Thursday morning, don't we? Yep. Yep. Thursday morning and, uh, this week coming up. Of course, they're, you know, they were doing their thing, uh, getting prepped and getting ready. And they think they went down to uh, Yellow Belly and stuff. And so he, Michael basically told me, he's like, man, we can do it from like 11 to like 1145. That's that's our opening. And so we're like, oh, it's OK. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but then we uh, we circle back to Stan, and uh, you know I'm driving well, down there to to uh, to uh, Texas and everything, and and uh, he, even he, way back, you know when we did your show, yeah, and you you told all them stories from the past, yeah, you know it was right after that, shortly after that, you was like, man, Stan would be a great guest to drag on and and bring out some more stories. Oh yeah, I'm excited for that and. So he called back yesterday a little late and, you know, we kind of talked through it and got some pictures rounded up. And I, I'm telling you all this because I, I get off the phone and I look at my daughter's Lauren, you know, she's 25 and, and I go, man, we got to stay in for tomorrow. And she goes, stay in the man. I go, yeah, <laughs> stay in the man. You know who I'm talking about. That's right. Stay the man. That's who we know him <laughs> for. But yeah, it's going to be a good time coming in. But, uh, before we get get him in here, though, I think we got a couple pictures to show, right? Just kind of what shook this week. Get that going. Yep, just a uh, a few little things to to pop on here. Let me roll up my deal here, get in place, and move us to the side. All right, this was sent to me. This was teased to me by Miss Tracy Lynn. You ready for this? I'm ready. What you got? <laughs> you got the look at that guy out there. She, oh, there the, the look at it guy showed up looking at my French, not my French fries, but Tracy Lynn sent me this. Now they're, now, they're, now they're digging in, right? Oh, now, yeah. 
you know, she, she sent me that and I'm like, man, it's going to be uh, three weeks before we're yeah. down there to get Eight fourth. <laughs> French yeah. fries. That's funny. So oh, I'm digging that. I don't know. They look good. I hope they taste as good as they look. Heck yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that's funny. Yeah. The yep. look at a guy wants one. He's looking at them fries. Like he's going to tear them up. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got to name that guy. Yeah, uh, look at it, Larry or something. Who, what is his name? We got to figure something out there. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe somebody can call me a good name. Yeah. It's got to be with an L. You know, he's look at it. So look at it. Look at it, Larry. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yep. Um, I seen. Uh, I see Kenneth Alt is watching. You got yeah. you got something going on tomorrow with with them. Yeah. Let's just talk about. It. You got a picture there. Yep. Here we go. So the car's in the box and, and, uh, um, you know, Kenneth reached out to me and a few others. I didn't know everybody on the group text, but, uh, um, asked me to come out for the yes program and, uh, uh, youth education services for the NHRA. And so, um, I kind of looked at my schedule and see what was going on with work. And, um, you know, when we go to these things, I got to have someone with me, especially if we're going to go down the track and, and uh, it's kind of like a little thing. It's going to be great, you know, with uh, about 350 uh, middle schoolers, high schoolers coming out around the Wichita area and, and look at some cars. We're going to have some funny cars and, and ultra uh, rear engine dragsters. And of course, uh, myself, I don't know all who he's got coming out, but Troy Aves and I got together and, and uh, he's going to come out and help me. And I also uh, talked to actually uh, Textron Aviation. We got a, a recruiting department, you know, and, and, uh, so they'll be out there as well. So we hand hand yeah. out some swag and that sort of thing. And I know like WSU Tech and uh, we'll be out there. So yeah, she's locked and loaded in the box and we'll go out there and maybe maybe make a little baby hit and make sure everything's good for Texas. And, uh, and uh, but yeah, I'm excited for that. It's from nine to two. So, and uh, if Kenny's watching, can just anybody show up? Like if I, if someone's on their lunch break or they come out or you got to, what, what's going on with that? Can, uh, can we invite anybody or you got to be a kid or what's going on with that? Any like admission price or just drive through the gate? What yeah. kind of the scoop on that and make sure to take a bunch of pictures too, Rod. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But yeah, that's what's going on with me. So I'm excited. I kind of get that ready today and um, got her loaded up. So, cause we got to be out there at old dark 30 to set up. And um, so, and we'll get our little tent and, you know, get our stuff, get some swag out there and, There'll be some uh, busload of kids coming, it sounds like. So it's going to be good. Cool. <clears throat> and it'll be in the box again. Yes. Uh, Wednesday night, we're going to load it back up. Yeah. Wednesday night. Texas Radio Roundup. That's it. That's it. Excited yep. for that, man. That's that's just one of those bucket list deals, you know, you want to do every year. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes great and get another great ET like we did last year and you know, just mix it up with those guys. And, and, uh, so I'm super excited about that. See some of the boys from Topeka and of course, Cameron will be there and I'm sure, uh, Derek Kelly will be there and, and, uh, it's just a good time. It's just nothing but a good time. Yeah. And yellow belly had an event yesterday, Michael Hollis, uh, that, that runs that him and him and Barrett green, Michael races that stuff with his Nova. Yeah. And just a shout out to Michael. He wins. I don't know what class it was. You might know what class it was. I didn't watch it that close. Yeah, Chief. He's got a. He's got what about four inches of cash right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like they got some gold too, right? I think they got some medallion. Oh, yeah, some cool, uh, cool yeah. chain and medallion or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and those numbers are correct. This was right off of the Forever Grudge post that congratulated Michael and his pops, Mike, on the yeah. twenty-one thousand dollar victory at Yellow Belly. Woo. That's awesome, man. Getting it done, man. A little street car. Yep. That's awesome. Then he'll he'll turn his attention around this week and get ready for uh get ready for us and a, f- a few hundred other people to show up for radio roundup this week. You bet. You bet. Uh that's a comment. Let's see what this is. That's my buddy Tim Alt. He says you guys should come to Amarillo. Tim, I watch the Amarillo stuff of of things that are going on down there and uh and also see where the van boris brothers are gonna spiff that place up so it's definitely gonna be something to watch that's nice yep um i've been watching this too boom 
<laughs> that's Ooh. that's the Enos weather. A weather, okay. 87, 80, not terrible. No? Yeah. You know, those ran chances aren't yeah. real worrisome. Right. But we'll see how it plays out. Yeah. I've just been kind of watching that as as the days go on, you know. Right on. Well, it was hot today. I think it got to 90, 91. I was out there mowing. Holy cow. I thought it got up like 130 or 140. I don't know. <laughs> You're probably in there in your air conditioning garage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I turned it on about 2.30. Yeah. I, I, I better, I better I cool this place off before 7 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So I, seen, I seen 93 degrees at 5.48 tonight. Oh, dang. Woo. Got 93. Wow. That's, that's like July. Yeah. That's, it's uh, coming. I was out there sweating, pushing the mower. Um, you mentioned Chopper and them guys. I just, yeah. I just, I just realized this when I put this picture together because Cameron, I asked Cameron where his parking spot is the other day, and he told me. Well, in the parking lot photo that I had, I couldn't see where his number was at, okay. but I ended up finding another picture, and I found it. He's number seventy-eight. He's oh, nose Cameron? to nose with us. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that till just an hour ago. And that is awesome because yeah. uh, before he was up north a little bit, or yeah, he was up north on the parking lot, like in the teens or 20s. So that's awesome, man, right there. Heck yeah. Chopper has that city block there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got, you know, they have stop signs in there one way, you know, restaurants. Yep. It's you know. gated. You got to yeah. have ID yeah. to get yeah, in. You got to just yep. get it in, right. A secret handshake. Yeah. But, but we know Tim Webb, so that'll help. That's all that matters. <laughs> all that matters. But heck yeah, man. Cameron's going to be there. That's going to be a, nothing but a good yep. time. Yep. Awesome. That'll be, uh, and you know, then no snows. That's fun. Heck yeah. And then, of course, the secret, you know, we got the light pole right there, too. So we got all that space. Yeah, that was that was absolutely planned on purpose. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw this comment up real quick. This is a good feedback here. This is Brett Lobel says, these live shows you guys do are great. Keep it up. I Thank you, Brett. That, Thanks Brett. for the feedback on that. That's great. Hell yeah. Thank you. Cool, cool. Well, only got about one or two more things, <clears throat> and it's Flying H. And we know Brandon was there. They yeah. Had a, they had a no prep today. We was we was trying to figure out where the prep went. I like <laughs> I like your idea. Did you see her? Um, yeah. <laughs> Did, yeah. Do you want me to tell the group what my idea was? But it might be a secret, but go ahead. Uh, that's true. I'll keep it. I'll keep it a secret. I, don't I mean, wanna, yeah. It's, I ain't it's, cat out of the bag. They, they've been running out things as a prep track for the last couple of days. Now I don't know that's where right. the prep went. That's right. But anyway, that's, that's Brandon in the left lane and Robin Roberts on the right there. And and uh he was giving a shout out to Brandon Junkyard Stude Racing. He has his car flying. It was a great race. Heck yeah. So, oh, you know, there's been like three days of stuff going on over there. Everything right. from everybody has been super awesome feedback from that track. And I mean, what a way to do it, you know, have Martin Mickey come out there and basically, you know, christen the track by going down the left lane, going down the right lane and, and uh, the first hits down and, you know, and just thinking about Robin Roberts here too, you know, they're getting ready to take off. I think it's next weekend or the weekend after that MPK seven starts out. And so it's just, that's just good stuff right there to have that track so close, you know, they're going to host an MPK race as well. And so will Tulsa. So that's two right here in, in the Midwest. Yeah. Go to. So <clears throat> I just love seeing this track come, come to this area. There's going to be a lot of small tire racing going on and, and um, just happy to see what, what it does. Keep it going. Yep. We'll have to get over there first year sometime this year. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And the other thing I saw that I thought was really, really cool and different because I haven't seen it like this yet, but that timing board, look at the lights oh, on yeah. that timing board at Kansas City, Flying H. Cool. This was a black truck. I don't remember who it was, the guy's name, but I, I snatched this photo because uh, there was some Brian, cool. Is that Brian Wise? Is that what it was? Man, it might be. I don't know. I'm not saying nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Man, got the old coyote going there. <laughs> yeah, he's got. Yep. Could be. I don't know. That's a good pass right there. Yeah, those. That's a cool board. It's cool looking stuff. Yeah. Um, that's all I got for that stuff. Right on. Just a, just a quick little things to run through there, and and uh, we're ready for the man. Yeah, I'm ready for the man as well. And so you know, just talking about it before we bring him in, you know. 
uh, <clears throat> Stan is just, uh, for me, you know, I met him and we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but he's just someone that, uh, you know, you could call, bounce a question off of, um, you know, he's real uh, meticulous, um, just, you know, just excited for him to be on the show tonight. And um, I'm just, uh, I know you guys are going to ask a lot of good questions. We got some good pictures uh, coming in and, and I'm just glad that he had a couple hours to sit down with us. So I'm, I'm a kid in a can store right now. So this is awesome stuff. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, let's bring him in. Ladies and gentlemen, Stan, the man, Williams. <laughs> hey, Stan. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, thanks for coming on. Sure. It's been a long time since I uh, had much to do with the racing world. Oh, I know. But it never leaves you, right? You're still thinking about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't miss sweating my ass off on those hot days in that double layer yeah. fire suit, so... Oh, no, no. You guys can have that. Sure. We, we don't want to do it either. We want to do it at, in the nighttime at dark. <laughs> right. <laughs> when the track is good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, we're excited for you to be on. We appreciate you coming in. I can see people already just chiming in yeah. saying hello and that sort of thing. And so um, not sure, sure. To sure see those as well uh, when when um, Gary brings them up. But we can just talk through them as they, as they come along. But, uh, uh Shane just gave you a shout out there. Bring that up. He says, stay at the old man, Williams. <laughs> uh, that's how the it's night's going to go. Going on here. Oh, yeah. This is how it's going to go, Stan, so be ready. <laughs> Still great. got my hair, though. There you go. Yeah. No, that's good stuff. But no, we're just going to reminisce a little bit and talk about some things and and uh, see where the conversations go. Uh, you know, we, we loaded up the pictures, and uh, I just think we'll just talk through it. But I want to I want to kick this off with a story. All right. No oh boy. So, here we go. <laughs> so this is how this is how I met Stan. All right. And let me tell you something, Stan. I knew you probably three to five years before I met you. Okay. And so what's going on is I worked at Whitlock Auto Supply. All right. In Wichita. Okay. And so I come in. I'm just a, a high school kid, like in 1988 or so, give or take. And um, and so I'm sitting there in my uh, my supervisor comes in, David Gray, and David Gray had a red and black SS uh, Chevelle, 1970-ish, had a big block in it, went like 1240s, went like 1180s or so, give or take, on the nitrous, not 100% sure. And so he comes in, oh, my goodness, his head's down. He's kind of, you know, he's got the puppy dog eyes, and, you know, he's my hero. He's got 11 second street car, you know what I mean? It's like, what's up, what's going on, Dave? He's like, uh, oh, man, I, I got beat last night. Oh, you know, it's almost like a scene from American Graffiti. You know, oh, no one can be you. You know, you're, you're the best. You know, and that sort of thing. And uh, he's like, he goes, no, I got beat last night. I go, well, who beat you? You know, it had to be some sort of rocket ship. You know, and he's like, it was a four-wheel drive scout. I'm like, what? A four-wheel drive scout? There's no way. And he's like, yes, this guy just drove away from me. I think he had it in four high or something and just drove out of my life and and uh, do you remember that night? Do you remember? Oh, that yeah. Story? Yeah. Take us through your ver version a little bit. Well, we were just out. Me and me and I think it was Phil Humphreys, I think, was with me. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. He yeah. was always, uh, I, I dragged him out of, out, of the, out of the house. He was probably junior high. I don't know. Yeah. He was pretty young. Yeah. And uh, he always uh, enjoyed uh, going with me. And we, we just went to Wichita to see what was out there. And, we didn't right. know anybody. I didn't know. I didn't know anybody out there. So <laughs> we were just taking what was come, what was thrown at us, you know. And yeah. uh, so we hook them up, and we get get a race. And I go out the back lot, and I'm uh, slowing my timing down. I got my timing light out there, and I'm backing the timing off because we didn't have you know timing retarders or nothing like that. I mean, yeah. I had to pick, take about ten degrees of timing out to run the nitrous, and so I'm over there pulling the timing out so we could race and yeah and uh then we get lined up and i i, I remember you, you said that i i looked over at his car and i go oh, hell you got slicks <laughs> 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 and it's like okay well that's all right yeah, come on <laughs> i got i got four-wheel drive so we'll, we'll see what happens here oh, and uh what was on k42 is that where we yep we're at yep and uh everybody be lined up on that side road i think right. watching the deal and uh it, 
it's fairly it wasn't you know the safest place to race probably but it wasn't sure. too, too bad but uh we didn't get caught anyway <laughs> but uh yeah, it, I, I could race, I could run the same numbers on a dirty, dirty street as I could the track because, I mean, yeah. the four-wheel drive just launched. Right. And uh little thing worked pretty good back then. Yeah, it did. Now, was this your high school ride or what was this? Oh, yeah, I bought it brand new and at the end of my freshman year in high school. Yeah. And, of course, dad was a dealer for international, so um, I sat in the kitchen one day and me and dad went through the checklist and i started checking the boxes i wanted and yeah and uh <laughs> about you know, what year ish was this you're talking 79 it was yeah. a 79 79 scout wow okay and uh you got a picture of that gary i do yeah that's right. my, probably my senior senior picture there or one of my pictures i don't know there you go. <laughs> was, Who would think you'd line up that and that thing would just drag your ass all over the road? <laughs> Some, somewhere down the road, I got rid of the white wall tires and got some white letter tires at least. <laughs> how, how fast did you get this thing? Did you ever take it to the track? Oh, yeah. A couple times. Uh, it run like 14 seconds at like 95 mile an hour on the motor. And then the first thing I put on was a plate system. It was a Moroso adjustable plate. And of course I put the biggest bars that come in the kit in there pretty quick. And they were supposed to be 200 horsepower, but I don't think they were. Yeah. Um, but uh, it run 12 fifties at 110, I okay. think on that plate. And it was pretty reliable with the plate. I, I didn't tear nothing up with it. And um, then, I, then, uh, Phil, Phil got a new hot rod magazine and showed me this new new invention called the direct port injection from NOS. <laughs> and uh, I had to have it. So yeah. we get on the phone with Mike Thermos himself, and they sent us a kit and a box of straight lines and no directions, and we're supposed to figure out how this worked, you know. <laughs> and uh, I was one of the first – it was one of the first Fogger kits they made, I think. Wow. And uh, – uh, right away I decided that was a whole different animal and, uh, I had to upgrade my fuel system and, and, uh, uh, I blew it up the first time I used it. I mean, it blew a head gasket out just <laughs> big time. That was the biggest weak, weak link on that thing. Um, that's when you're supposed to back it off two degrees, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You blow it up, just back it off. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it would, uh, it lift the head, all lift the heads and blow the head gasket out. It just had ten head, ten bolts holding the heads on, yeah. And uh, the head was about three hundred thousand thick on the deck, and I milled a hundred off to get the compression up. So yeah. I was down to just a two hundred thousand thick deck and a steel head. Yeah. And um, looking back, I should have probably not milled the head and had some pistons made to get the compression up. Sure. But, uh, so what was the engine in this thing? It was a the factory was a 345 and then uh in the pickups and some of the older in uh, i think the bigger trucks they they put a 392 and so i found a 392 out of a junkyard and uh, built it up and i think i was sophomore or junior year i pulled the motor out of that thing and and uh put this 392 in that i built and sold the factory motor to some farmer for his grain truck or something and uh but me and me and dad put the motor together and I ported the heads for it in in a high school shop class while everybody was while everybody was in class I was out in the shop porting heads and uh, it, it was it wasn't a great motor you know looking back at what we have today I mean the heads were terrible uh, the bottom end wasn't that strong and uh, but it's what I had and that's what it was and Sure. Threw a lot of nitrous at it and it worked make it make pretty good power, you know. So <laughs> learn to learn to rebuild uh torque flight transmissions out of that deal because I'd tear those up if if I didn't have <laughs> them shifting hard enough. Yeah, that was my next question. <clears throat> Transmission was in it. Yeah, three speed torque flight. Yeah. And so I just racing real high or 
Go ahead. Four wheel, four wheel high. I locked the front hubs in because in automatic hubs, they, they break the hubs loose. And so I'd, I'd lock the hubs in solid and just put it in four high and put it to the floor. I had pushed the brakes as hard as I could and put it to the floor. And then when it's time to go, I'd let off the brake and hit the nitrous button. And away you went. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What's your fastest pass? With the fogger, it went 1180s at 115 or 14. Very cool. Very cool. Probably not, as fast, probably not as fast as the stories go, but, you know. Oh, and that's I, like mid 80s or so at that point, early 80s, mid 80s. Um, I graduated in 82, so that was probably 84, 80, you know, with, when I had the fog yeah. on, it, probably. Yeah. Well, that's getting it done, especially on the uh, street. I mean, if you can launch in four wheel high and stick yeah. off the floor and just walk away from somebody, it was fun. I mean, but uh, it got to where I'd. I never did get the head gasket deal totally solved. I mean, sure, sure. I, I, I had some studs made by Wichita Nut and Bolt or something like that, and they weren't worth a shit. And then I, yeah, then I had some ARP studs made, and uh, you know, didn't know all these suppliers at the time. I mean, you know, I didn't know who made pistons. I didn't know who made cams. I mean, you know, I had to kind of learn how to get stuff made and. You know, I didn't know I could get valves made, you know, and so I just ran the old stock international valves, you know, heavy old valve, you know, valve stems. And and uh, the first engine I put together had uh, stock pistons, which had, I think, three thirty seconds top rings. I mean, they were thick, big old thick rings and it'd blow the dipstick out at about fifty five hundred <laughs> and because uh, the rings would flutter. Yeah. And so then, then I had a set of uh, pistons made by Vinolia, I think it was, and uh, with one sixteenth rings on the top, and that fixed that. Right now, Gary, did you also hear about the Scout when you were in Salina when you were coming up? Yeah, yeah, I got I got into the car race car scene around '93 in Salina, and some of the guys up there that I ran with would talk about this scout that would come from out of town. I didn't, I didn't know you didn't know your scout or nothing back then, but there was, there were stories up there then of this scout that would come around and just, just kill everybody. Did you go up there and do some street racing or did they get end up out of town somewhere where you was at? I think I went up to Salina once, maybe, maybe twice. And, uh, the uh, the Monosmith brothers, Blake and Eric Monosmith, would yeah. have been big on the street back then, and maybe John. I remember, I remember I remember taking a ride in their car with their training brake. That was the first experience I had with a car with a training brake, and I thought that was pretty cool. It's like it wasn't near as violent as I thought, you know. And and it's like hell, I might need one of these, you know. Do you know <laughs> which car it was? Whose it was? I don't remember. Blake Blake had remember. a black Chevelle back. He's had it forever, but um, Eric's had a bunch of stuff and. You know, yeah, I'm not very good with names. I, 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 I now that you say Monosmith, I remember that. But uh, yep, yep, Eric and Blake. Yeah, cool. I had a I had a guy come in just last week, um, brought a truck in to get worked on, and uh, he goes, "Now, do you have the old Scout?" And I go, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was just last week. Some guy was asking about that, and it's like that thing doesn't die, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'd heard about it. I didn't didn't know you or nothing about it, but I'd heard about this scout that had run around just stomping everybody's ass on the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah today, if, today if I built a different motor for it, I mean it'd be a probably be scary, I guess, if that you yeah. know, if I get it too fast. <laughs> it hey, uh, I got some intel saying it was in a Chevy too. Okay. Chevy two? Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, cool yeah. stuff. Cool stuff. So uh, let's let's keep moving along here. Um, so I think your next car that I know of you, and kind of when I first met you, was the uh, the purple car. What I called myself, I think we called it Barney. I don't know if it had a name or anything. Yeah, uh, but uh, that was a '69. Yeah. How, where did you get this car? How did it come? To I you? bought it in Kansas City. I think it was red and white when I bought it. Um, had wire spoke wheels and a three twenty seven small block and and um, I drove it around like that for a while, and then the oil pickup tube fell out of the motor, and I was turning a corner and stepping on it and spun a bearing in it. And so that was the start of 
bigger and better <laughs> things to come. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it's at Thunder Valley. Looks yeah, I think so. I, I used to win wheelie contests with that thing because it would do wheelies. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, it was just slapper bars. Yeah, and uh, yeah, um, it was a most of the time it had a four sixty eight big block that I built. It had steel heads for a while, and then it ended up with a set of Brodix heads on it. And then the end what? of to, towards what? the end of the life of that car, I had a five hundred nine built. Um, by Pat Busey and uh, put that in there. What is this time frame here like at, at Thunder Valley where this is at? Oh, Any? I would guess early 90s, maybe. I'm a okay. little, little confused on the dates. No, that's cool. I, uh, cool. I remember uh, a midnight that we went to. Uh, myself, I was with Brett Birch. He had his car running, you know, the 970 frame. Uh, at this time, your car was running in the 940 frame. It had uh, the 468 with two kits. And I remember you just tried out the set of 29s. I think you had the uh, 28s there for a little bit, and you you uh, tried some 29s, maybe the Ws. You know, that's when all that was just coming out. Yeah, you know? I think I had to get the wheel wells lengthened and to fit yeah. those on there. Yeah, and you it was reach for the sky that night. I remember you had to, that first time you came out, it was uh, all up in the air and. And uh, of course, you came back and made some adjustments, and I think uh, it probably, was, took the, probably took the floor jack out of the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember right, it was you and Brett in the final that night, and uh, I think you end up taking the money. But uh, but yeah, that was a that, everybody knows that car. You know what I mean? That's pretty fun. I, I I later on got it down into the eight seventies, I think. Right on with, with that five hundred nine and yeah, bogger setup and. Yeah. I remember we were talking about a story where, you know, you had two kits on it, like a plate and a fogger, but um, you were wanting both kits going on, on down. You know, we raced quarter mile down back then, but I think you, uh, there was a wiring thing you were, you were messing with that one kit would, when one would come on, the other one would go off and you had to put some lights on it or something. You remember that? Oh, I had, I had problems with my damn uh, throttle switch. Yeah. The throttle sh switch would, would shut off. And yeah. so it come on and shut off and it come on and shut off. And, and I had these little micro switches that I'd used. And um, so I later found a bigger switch that I used that was more reliable. And I put a, just put an on off light to tell when each kit was on just, just so I could tell if they were on or not. Cause right. they were shutting off down track and you really, I mean, you could tell, but you weren't really sure what was going on. Sure. And um, that, that made it, kind of night and day you know obvious you know if it was when the light shut off you knew or it blinked or fluttered or you know you sure knew, you knew things weren't working right but uh, yeah yeah I, I struggled with that for quite a while <laughs> something stupid as that you know yeah. but then uh, as soon as i got that working um i think the one of the first first weekends i got it working i tossed a rod out and oiled down the track for him <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah <no>. well <laughs> I remember yeah. right it was 19s it picked up like three tenths yeah that was that was my 468 and that was you know stock rods and and uh just you know nothing special and and i think it looking back i think it might have galled a wrist pin mm -hmm. and then flexed the rod and caused it to break but yeah you know, who knows well, I mean, and then that's when you reached out to pat musey is that fair right yeah it's like because <clears throat> I, I was having trouble blowing head gaskets and i wanted to get a um a head that I could bolt to the where those missing head bolts were on a big block and the Donovan block had the uh, or Brodix block I think it was that then had the extra bolts in the middle so you could put some bolts in the valley and clamp the head better and and so I called Pat to to get a price and you know he was giving me the best price on all the parts and uh, so it's like well hell I'll just just get get all the stuff from him and then next thing you know I wanted to get a dynode and and um then it was like well how much you charge to build it and it was it was too cheap to that i couldn't pass up so i just let him finish it you know yeah and we we made a flying trip on a weekend to new jersey and uh watched it get dynoed and drove home <laughs> and <laughs> me, and, me and my truck driver buddy scott Coyle went with me and we made that made that one weekend it was a pretty long pretty long weekend <laughs> sure, sure 
Yeah. Well, and I remember you were coming back and, you know, even at Wichita, like, you know, entering both classes, hot lapping that thing and, you know. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. We were, we were winning the small tire class and then we looked around at the big tire class and was like, I think I can win this class too. So <laughs> we just entered both of them and yeah. uh, we was, say hot lapping and changing bottles in the pits in the lanes and and uh, did anybody holler about you doing that running two classes oh uh, they didn't like that so the next weekend they made a they, <laughs> they don't the like rules. it if you beat them right <laughs> the, the, the next the next weekend they changed the rules no uh -oh. <laughs> that means they didn't like it they didn't like yeah. it man. i got a oh, lot of rules man. i had a lot of rules changed over the years <laughs> yeah. because of my car <laughs> kurt has an idea for the scout he says, Stan, you need to put a red eye in, in a scout. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I need a track hawk is what I need. I need to get a track hawk. That, that'd be you, a, uh, I kind of know how much that scout weighed when you were racing it? 4,200. 42. Okay. So pretty light compared to yeah. some of this other stuff. Yeah, and that's kind of what your uh, red eye weighs, doesn't it? 42 to 44. I think it's like 44 or 45. Yeah. It's stupid heavy. Yeah. <laughs> but it don't feel like it. <laughs> uh, I bet not. What's uh? give me, give me some memories on this uh, car right here. What was your favorite race you went to with this car? With, with this, with the uh, 69, 69. Oh, I didn't travel that much with it. Um, a lot of Tulsa midnights. Uh, I mean, the, the organized heads up racing was not, yeah near what it was today and you know we were just doing a lot of test and tune stuff and if whenever there was any kind of you know hundred dollar shootout or whatever you know they didn't pay that yeah. much usually the midnight no, I, yeah i remember that too some of the midnights and i think they had something like the muffler shootout a couple of times a year yeah some <laughs> of that paid a little better you know yeah and um, um but yeah i, I know what you're saying oklahoma there. city and tulsa and in, in Wichita, that was that was probably uh, the biggest deal. And those Tulsa yeah. midnights, I remember. Yeah, pushing the track, pushing the car off the track at when the sun was coming up. Yeah, <laughs> broke a drive shaft or something. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, we were driving north on thirty five when the sun was coming up. I remember those man. We were on the track and the sun was coming up. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah, it was a late night. Yeah. Yeah, no, I remember was, that. Was that because of a big car count or just a slow operation? Yeah, and the bracket races wouldn't get over on, on time, and it took forever to get into the place. And, you know, it didn't start at midnight. It was mm. it was always much later than that. Yeah. And then somebody to oil the track down or, you know, whatever. And uh, it, yeah, it always took longer than it should. Sure. And they, they'd have several classes. It wasn't just big tire, small tire. They'd have some other stuff, too. And uh, just guys out graduating, and, and right, everybody was everybody was crowding the starting line. I mean, you, you know, I, I you hated to do a burnout because you're afraid you're going to hit somebody because they were all just right in your space, you know. Yeah. It's like, come on, guys, give me some room here. And uh, yeah, and some things have never changed. That's kind of the way it is now, you know, as well. Money, some of them, hundred dollar bills were flying, you know, yeah. you know, or ten dollar bills or whatever it was back then, you know. But, sure. Uh, Everybody was betting on their favorite favorite race, you know? Yeah. Brett Lobel has a memory. He says, I made a couple laps against Stan back in the day. He won them all, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was always my goal. <laughs> That's awesome. I kind of, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of money back then, and, and so I was, I kind of uh, funded the car with winning, you know? And, sure. Uh, um sleeping in the stage and <laughs> probably, probably so gotta well, get some rest where you can yeah get 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 uh don't want to get too too nervous before the track you know the race that was always tough you know the butterflies you know sure yeah absolutely i actually i think i had more butterflies street racing than i ever did at the track though because there was all these always that you know, worry about getting caught and, and, uh, you know, so it was just one more, one more thing to worry about, you know, you bet. But, but uh, I guess maybe I just got used to it by the time I was actually racing in the, at the track, but 
Well, and uh, did this car make it to the MS, uh, MSRA? Did you still have it, or was it gone by when that came about? I don't think I did any. I don't think I did MSRA. MSRA, you said? Yeah. Yeah, but, I think that was my new car, the yeah. 86. Because I remember your dad had the 57. And uh, I would race in his class, you know, when I had my other white LX, I would race up against him and like Bobby Stall and a couple other local, you know, true 28 cars, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember exactly when I got the 86, um, but probably somewhere in the early 90s or late 90s. Yeah, um, it was in 1998. Okay. And the reason I know that is because, uh, you know, Corey and I had the yellow car. Okay. And, okay. Uh, you know, we, we did some work there, helped Corey paint it. You wired the yellow car, all that. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Well, you, you brought the yellow car out at the same time I brought the 86 out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, here's a story, too. Uh, well, I, I'm going to save it for a minute because I know what the next picture is. So let's move. Let's go to the next one. Let's talk about the next picture. But I got a story. Yeah. About all right. It. <clears throat> Go ahead. This is your dad's 57 Chevy. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a crowd pleaser. That was yeah. a cool car. I remember this car. We'd come down to watch this. Didn't it run in the drag radio class? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He, now, now that was back in the BF Goodrich drag radio. Yes. That wasn't this stuff. We it got was a stick today. shift too, right? Yeah. It was a stick shift. Yes. Stick shift on <laughs> crappy drag radios that were great at the time. Yeah, yeah. They, they weren't nothing. They weren't nothing like the Mickey Thompsons. You know, the tires I got on my on my Hellcat are ten times better than what he had back then. Sure. And the track prep. Yeah, yeah. this car but was super cool. He uh, he at the at the first he just had a regular Doug Nash five speed and a three seventy seven um, small block, and uh, had to clutch the shift gears and and. Uh, I don't know what he was probably running in the high tens back then. Him and Dustin Johnson used to race back in those days. I think that was on a true radio class where you right. have a true radio. And then, uh, then he built that SB two motor and, uh, got into the drag radio class <laughs> and then got the, uh, G force clutchless transmission. And, and, uh, not everybody knew that was clutchless, but, uh, yeah. He didn't brag on that because some people would change the rules or something for that, you know. <laughs> but uh, somebody he had it in he must have had it in fifth gear or something. But somebody uh, at Kansas City made him push the car backwards and see if it jump out of gear. Well, in fifth gear it don't jump out of gear, but uh, if you put <laughs> it in first or second it jump out of gear. So <laughs> they they knew what they were they knew a little bit about clutchless transmissions, but they didn't know enough to make sure what gear he put it in they didn't know as much as he knew <laughs> yeah. oh, fine. but but uh that's cool yeah, he'd, <clears throat> he'd rev it to 4500 rpms and dump the clutch and the clutch was set to where it'd slip and and uh it would uh settle down and and then just bang in the rev limiter boy he would just you know 9000 rpm just bang bang, bang every time <laughs> <laughs> that's a great yeah. picture right there it is but it That's was uh, cool. naturally aspirated, and you know everybody he raced was would had nitrous or something, right? And, uh, or so blowers, nitrous or blowers, and uh, he did pretty good in that class, though. He got first or second in Springfield on their little deal they used to race. Right on. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Everybody, his biggest, he wanted to make him smile. I'll just go up and ask him when he turned the nitrous on, and I don't use nitrous. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great oh, that's awesome that was a fun man. car though heck yeah well and it's just it was fun watching you guys uh race together father son you know yeah. out there you guys you could tell you, th you thought a lot of light come from the same background there you you're always just thinking to the ninth tenth degree you know uh of things we we uh we, we put a he built a t he built a homemade tunnel ram and uh, two four barrels and uh, just got that going before he wrecked the car and was just starting to figure out the jetting on it. And when he first put it on, the jet jetting was way too rich and it, it acted like it was lean. So he was going the other direction. And then and this was before we had O2 sensors or anything like that. We were just 
Right. And uh, reading plugs and and uh, but anyway, finally got it leaned out to where it needed to be and was just starting to figure out staggering jetting and stuff and and then and then he wrecked it. But he got into low nines with that thing. I think nine oh something. Yeah, that's right. And he really wanted to see that eight ninety though, and right. that never happened. Yeah, but I think it had it in there on a good day. Sure. Well, I remember you telling me too, like if it's going to be slick or drag radio, because you put the battery in different places on the car, depending on what tire and that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah that He ran pretty much the BF Goodriches on that one. Yeah. But, uh, he'd play with, um, you know, RPM he left at. Of course, he played with the clutch a lot and yeah. then played with the um, front end travel. And, uh, he could, he, he put slicks on it, I think just one time mm -hmm. and, uh, he wasn't used to how to set it, you know, and, and, uh, had it, had the front end probably a little too loose and it went up on the back bumper and just come back down hard and yeah. bent his oil pan and ruined his wheels and yeah ruined the, uh, a arms. I mean, <laughs> it fucked the car up. <laughs> Does he still have the car? No, he wrecked it. At, uh, he barrel rolled it about six or eight times oh, at uh, Arc City. Really wrecked it. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. They were racing uh, eighth mile there, and they decided to race for the quarter, race a quarter mile race that, when he showed up, and he shifted into fifth gear about the about the stripe, and that's where they quit spraying, and mm. it went sideways. And of course, I think he thought he could save it, and and. Uh, and he just started barrel rolling. Yeah. He come out, he come out feeling, you know, no, no problems. But it sure. just drove the car. Took the fun out of it for him. Sure. Mm. Yeah. 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 Great car to see back then. Always loved watching that. I raced him a few times when I had mother LX hatch as well. It was just a good time. Just a good guy. Loved His favorite him. story is telling about Springfield. He had it. He had the clutch set too tight, and uh, it would wheelie when he shifted into, I think, third gear. <laughs> and uh, uh, the crowd just loved it, you know, and, and but it, it wasn't as fast that way. So he, he come back and back the clutch off a little bit. And, and the next pass, he made a faster run, but it didn't wheelie like that. And, you know, nobody they didn't cheer for him on that run. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody cheered for him on the run before, you know. <laughs> yeah. If you do wheelies like that going down the track, then they say, you know, they're lining up at your trailer to buy your t-shirts too. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> cool. I mean, it bounce, you know, it's bouncy, you know. Sure. No, that's great. Glad we brought that up. We want to talk about that car. Yep. I remember that car too. We'd come down from Salina to watch the heads up stuff. And this is just a really awesome car to see. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. Well, next we get into your first third gen that one. yep rick's racecraft built that thing we thought he was the guy to use because uh he built chuck samuel's car so okay uh, we really wasn't nothing that special <laughs> <laughs> it was just a widened out rear wheel tub and cheap four link nothing special on the four link i mean it was kind of lower end four link stuff and uh, stock front, stock front everything, and uh, stock floors. I mean, it was a heavy car. I think it weighed thirty-four hundred pounds. Dang! But uh, <clears throat> it was my first four-link, and uh, I remember the first time I let go of the tranny brake. I think it was Arc City. It was. And uh, I think it. it I swore a, a semi truck ran into the back of me. I mean, it just shot forward. It's like, what the hell? Because <laughs> my my '69 used to be like a, a rodeo ride, you know, and uh, the the four link made it a whole different whole different deal, you know. And uh, that's that 870 combination that was in the in the '69 all of a sudden was an 840 or 820, I think 820s right away, and uh, it, it became a whole different animal back in those days, you know. Yeah, the uh, I was there at Arc City. Uh, we did a test. Uh, you you did. You're one of the only cars there. And and then um, that that weekend we went to uh, Noble, 
And yeah. uh, that's when the car was still like, you know, that, you know, it needed painted. It was all. Oh, like, yeah. It, it was bl faded blue with peeling, yeah. you know, paint. And, yeah. And we hung out all, all day in, in your Suburban and the car was still in the trailer. And then uh, we unloaded it and went up there. And uh, I remember like Tony Thorne was there and some other yeah. some other guys. And uh, yeah. Glad to be. Yeah. And you took it. You took the money that night as well. I remember that. They, they swore I had a big 632 or something in there because I had manifold spacers to to match up to my heads. Yeah. And, uh, but I did have spacers, but it was only because the manifold was built, you know, to get the head manifold to line up with the ports. I had to space it up a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, so everybody swore I had had a big tall deck, but it wasn't a tall deck. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a 509. I think it might have been a I might have boarded out to a 526 somewhere down the line. Sure. Um, one of the one of the piston melting experiences made it <laughs> necessary to go bigger. Shane said 840s first weekend out. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably faster than that at, at Oklahoma, I think. It went in the 20s that weekend. I was gonna say I think so. Yeah. It was in the finals and uh make tony make tony worried yeah <laughs> yeah i think he went like a 31 or a 29 in the semis and then and then uh you ended up going o's in this bar if i remember right or 790s am i right no it went seven 70s 40s, 40s. oh okay i'm way off yeah yeah it was in san antonio or something down there and we were stepping it up to keep up you know I didn't usually turn it up until I was forced to. Sure. Some yellow car made me turn it up the first time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First in the sevens, I know. <laughs> I'll see you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, I, was second. I was second about 10 minutes later. I, it was. It was just who got up there first, you know. Yeah, I remember that day. It was a good day. I was a no, I think I changed jets after I saw what you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Chris Derrick was there that weekend too. He had his black Mustang with nitrous, you know, right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was always fun to razz. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Uh, any other memories? What were your favorite race with this one? Well, that first time out was pretty fun. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> oh it you know i learned a lot you know um that car probably made me more money than any car i've had um that clash of the titans the rules yeah. for that um that car fit like a glove and um I, for a while i could run two stages of nitrous and 30 i don't know if it was 34 3200 pounds um they may they may have made me add weight to be 3400 at one point to slow me down and uh but i won a lot of those races with that car that the super street class wasn't a super popular class so there wasn't always a huge car count but uh it it dominated that particular particular deal yeah and uh won a lot of 2500 hundred dollar checks <laughs> those are nice um, Shane said Stan had the hinged hood up and led Mr. Thorne walked over, looked at the motor and said F that and turned around and walked away <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right I, you, you got that right yeah. well Tony Thorne he had a Nova then right if I'm thinking right Gold. yeah I remember, I remember he had like titanium wheel studs and he somehow broke the studs on one of his passes and they were yeah. scrounging around trying to fix that. I'm like, man, titanium wheel studs. Who the hell does that? <laughs> <laughs> How much money has this guy got? You know, <laughs> I could barely afford half inch wheel studs, you know. <laughs> Phil said your fastest pass is 744. 744. Huh. Okay. Wow. I think that was in San Antonio. I think it was, it was, um, getting kind of violent i remember it was on the verge of shaking the tires a lot yeah yeah that was Would you run all it had left 
Were you running the 29 or the 31 tire? What was that? 29? Uh, I don't remember. I want to say 30. I don't know. I'm not sure. I remember that one. Whatever, whatever the rules were for that class, they might have been 29s. Yeah. I can't remember. I think it was for Super Street. And then in the Outlaw, it was the 31 or 33s. Right. Yeah, I want to say it was the 29.5s. Yeah. Shane says 632 with sheet metal intake and dual dominators on thorns combo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got beat by a little 522 with single four barrel. <laughs> <laughs> it would be make a guy mad, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I think somewhere down the line, I put two four barrels on that motor, I think. And then later put the same intake on a, on a, uh, on the, yeah, I'm, I think I'm getting, no, that's right. Cause I had a big ass spacer for that, um, uh, 692. I had like a inch thick spacer to make everything fit. Cause I didn't want to build a new manifold, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Phil said it was class rules 29 and a half. Yeah. This is, this is Kevin Steele. Kevin Steele says 32, 10, five tire. 32. Mm. I don't know what that means. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. So you're 30 so, uh, I remember this and, you know, you were racing it and stuff pretty, you know, quite often. And then you started, um, you know, got to get another car. And I think you had a, you know, another campaign, in another car while you're racing this car and you kind of put this car up for sale as that yeah. car was getting finished out and that sort of thing. Talk us through that. Well, I, I, yeah, I was building that car. Uh, it took a while to build it. So while it was getting built, I, I raced the other one for a while and, uh, you know, they, they looked a lot alike. So it was kind of hard to tell the difference, but until you opened the door and looked at the floor and, and, uh, it was a much more of a race car than the, than the first one was. I mean, the first one, you know, for a while it had power windows and locks and, you know, I used to brag about that power, you know, when I first put it together, it had all the power accessories on it. And, and, yeah. uh, later I got fiberglass doors, I think, but, um, when, when I didn't, well, I'm trying to think if I had fiberglass doors on that car. I think I did. Um, you know, just trying to get the weight down because it was, it was kind of heavy. Sure. But then as they lower the weight rules, you know, I tried to do what I could to make them. Now that car with the nitrous on it, it got down to 20, 2850, I think. I mean, it got, <laughs> it got a lot lighter and, uh, it went, um, seven Oh something with Dang. the nitrous. And, um, so it was, it was four tenths, three tenths faster than the other car. And, um, but, um, uh, is this the dual four barrel set up here? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it was because I, I don't, I think I had the dual fours. I only ran it this way for a year. Uh -huh. Um, and, uh, I got it going good and ran good. And, you know, I was trying to race an outlaw 10 five. And all of a sudden, that's a lot faster class. And so yeah. I was kind of kind of outgunned. I mean, the, the big motors were coming along. And, and uh, so I was, uh, even though I was a 692, that was kind of small on the big nitrous world. And uh, everybody was going turbos and blowers. And uh, I held out for a while. And then the, the fastest pass I made in that car, um, I got beat at the finish line by a damn turbo car. And I was like, this is bullshit. So, <laughs> so I, I, uh, had to join the, join the crowd, sold all yeah. my nitrous stuff and, and, uh, converted it to turbos. Um, put a smaller crank in it and, and, uh, made it a 648 and, uh, two big 91s and, um, had the guys at uh, ProTech help me. Is that right, ProTech? And uh, Steve Pe uh, Steve Petty. ProLine. 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 Pro um, 
they they hooked me up with the parts and and uh steve helped me get a baseline tune on it and and uh we fought it for a while getting it figured out and then uh um had a had an injector driver bad for the first few times out and then i borrowed a computer off of uh mike duffy i think is who i got it from or somebody like that uh, they had an, another computer that, to borrow and uh I borrowed their computer and and uh, put my tune in it, and all of a sudden it started running. And then <laughs> right. I figured out it was too rich, and so we leaned out a little bit and picked up like 15 mile an hour on one tune. Uh-huh. And uh, you using big stuff back then. It was big stuff three, yeah, yeah, and uh, pretty archaic compared to the Holly stuff. Yeah, but, uh, that was my first uh, first taste of fuel injection, and uh, Steve got me started, and then. Uh, I figured out what I didn't like, what he did, and corrected it. And <laughs> kind of went on my own after that. But uh, it would have been nice if it would have ran correct when he was there, so I could have, you know, learned learned more and, you know, kind of got it figured out while he was there. But sure. uh, as it was, we were dynoing it on seven cylinders and and mm. making passes on seven cylinders and. Never hurt nothing, but uh, that's amazing. <laughs> Chris Wilson says, "Big stuff, all of the football." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shane says the best engine combo I've ever been around. Still, yeah. Now he's going Hemi's. So <laughs> we'll yeah. see. Yeah, that was a pretty bulletproof motor. I mean, I never did really push it hard like these guys are today. Um, and even when uh, Jason had it, he was he was pushing it harder with the alcohol and the bigger blowers and the, the no prep stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was I wasn't hurting the motor very often. I was just wrecking the car. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't keep it in car between the lines couldn't keep from shaking the tires i couldn't get stopped i mean i, I wrecked that car more times well and, you know back then too that's a, a big reason why they backed it up to the eighth you were still racing quarter back then yeah hmm. yeah down in san antonio i think we crossed the finish line under power and went sideways and and uh had to had to get it straightened out before I pulled the parachutes because my parachutes were up above my head and I didn't want to take my hands off the wheel. And, and, uh, by the time I got the parachutes pulled and stopped and I was blasting through the shutdown area and jumping the fences and barrels and sand and yeah, ended up in somebody's yard. <laughs> mm. that Shane, says, Shane says 90 to a hundred runs before, before we would bring it back for a freshen. Yeah. It'd go a long ways. It's harder on transmissions than it was engines. <laughs> and if I could keep the trannies together, that was the, that was it. And just keep it off the guardrail and keep from shaking the tires. I never did get the tire shake figured out. That was, that was very frustrating for me. Sure. The, the very end, I bought some 16, 16 by 16 inch wheels and went to the 16 inch 33 tire. And that was supposed to fix the tire shake and it, it didn't all right i didn't i, I couldn't figure it out so that was frustrating because mm. i was all about building power and not worrying about chassis stuff and uh, I, I didn't the chassis stuff was just a necessary evil and uh i was all about trying to make you know get the tune figured out get it smooth get it you know and figure out how to make more power but i never did get to the point where i was trying to make more power. I was just trying to get the damn car down the track. But, uh, controller do you use is the AMS or? Um, I, I, the first boost controller was, uh, some timers and, and, uh, little, little solenoids, little, little pressure regulators. And I, I had, uh, in fact, I, I just tore that apart and started using the pressure regulators to make a barrel pump out of. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I still had that thing laying around, um, but uh, yeah, it was just uh, four regulators and, and three solenoids, and uh, you just brought it in with timers as you went down the track, and 
it worked pretty good. And then um, I got talked into going to that AMS 1000. And uh, the first time down the track with that, I was getting advice from this guy and he's telling me, telling me what boost to leave on. And I'm going, dude, that's a lot of boost. You want to go fast or not? And, okay. So I left on 10 pounds of boost or whatever he said and just shook the shit out of the tires and popped popped all the relays out of the car and broke the water tank. And I mean, oh, wow. <laughs> it was hard on things. <laughs> so we got all that fixed and I said, okay, now what do you want me to leave on? Okay. <laughs> Maybe back it off a little. <laughs> wow. How how fast did this twin turbo combo eventually go in this car? Well, I got it to go six nineties at two eleven, twelve, two ten, eleven, I don't know. And uh, then uh, Jason started racing at uh, eighth mile stuff and uh, put the big tires on it. So they got it to go a lot faster than I did. Okay. But, uh, I don't think they ever ran quarter, but uh the eighth mile was just starting to come around as I as I was quitting. Yeah, I think we'll I this. got four uh, teens out of it, like four seventeen or something like that. Yeah, it was low low fours. I know. Yeah, um, and uh, they put bigger bigger turbos on it and put the holly on it and put it on alcohol. I mean, I I would have done the alcohol back then, but. Um, we didn't have injectors that were big enough. Right. We didn't have um, any ignition system that run it except a magneto. Um, and the computers to run all that weren't as, as cool, you know, they're just yeah. said four sixteen one eighty six. So yeah. I think I was in the four forty nine or something like that mm -hmm. at probably one seventy two or three or four i don't know yeah. um so they they definitely got it to pick up but uh um but yeah alcohol today um you know you run coil on plugs so that gets rid of the magneto that's cheap um you got a holly that'll drive it and you you know you've got big injectors that you can run either one or two injectors in them yeah and uh you know we had we were running 160 injectors and I had the high tech two twelves or something. Right. And, uh, so if you were running three injectors, you had, to, you know, you had to run three one sixties. That was still not very much fuel compared to today. Yeah. And, uh, so everybody that was running alcohol, I was seeing not very successful and it's like, ah, eh, I'm just going to stick with gas. I, I think I can make that work. And so I, I like the gas and never, rarely i don't think i ever really hurt the motor i mean i might have i had some spare pistons and i because i was used to running nitrous and i had you had to have spare pistons <laughs> and uh i think i might have changed one or two just because i didn't like the way it looked or something but not not really because it was bad right and uh so that was a pretty bulletproof combination you sent a video to us that I'm going to play here of the car at Tulsa. We'll yeah, I wish, the, I wish you had the. I wish you had the audio because that the old, old Dingman no. was really getting with it on that on the on the audio. Yeah, we'll play this real quick. Start out behind, but they come around hard. 703 211. Yeah. Oh man, you did. You had a big man. <laughs> yeah, we old Chris was coming around the back door. Look, <laughs> look at that mile an hour. <laughs> and he got pretty excited. That's awesome. Who was in the other lane? Do you remember who that was? It looked like a red firebird oh, or something. Yeah, right? I know. I, I was he from Missouri. Uh, um I know him, but I can't. I can't. Say Maybe Shane knows. I don't know. It was. It wasn't Tyler. I'm sure. I'm sure Phil knows or somebody else that was watching knows. Yeah, it was, it was Tyler. <laughs> they they probably remember you driving around them still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ty, Tim. Oh, Tim Slavens. Okay. Okay. There we go. 
That's right. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> Two comments here. But like I said, it was yeah. Yep. You know, learning 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 that big stuff and and learning how to, you know, you read data logs <laughs> and, and uh find it, you know, you see the RPM fall off a little bit and you look at the cell it was in when it when it did that and, and uh you'd realize that it was too rich and you know adjusting that that cell and and fixing it and uh that that was i love that part that was fun yeah and uh but then once i got that part dialed in then it was all about getting it to hook up so yeah. <laughs> the, the fun kind of was over at that point for, for me anyway but uh that yeah. thing would would if he could run it in the 11 11 to 12 to 1 air fuel ratio would run great but anything less than 11, if you got it in the 10 nines, 10 eights, it, it goes over. I mean, it, didn't, it wasn't as happy. But if you could keep it anywhere between 11 and 12, it was, it didn't matter. But. Uh, what fuel was you using, C16? Or I think absorbed. I might have been using Q16. Q16, yep. Yeah. Made your, made your eyes, made your, give you a headache when you smell that crap. Sure. <laughs> I like the smell like you. <laughs> oh, it it you started up inside the shop and it boy it, it makes you gives you a headache. The the C sixteen was a lot more forgiving yeah. there. Uh-huh. <clears throat> well then then Kurt's got that methanol car he starts up in his shop and that about kills you. Yeah. Methanol, pure methanol. <laughs> yeah, I choke you out. But, yep. <clears throat> Well, that car is, we know where that car is at now. Oh, yeah. And I got sent a sneak peek picture. Oh, yeah? Yep. I only got one picture, he said. It's all I could get. He said, you can see it in person, but he ain't going to send me a picture. But this is the picture I got last night. Okay. Okay. And that's all he was sending me. So. Get rid of all the purple inside, it looks like. <laughs> it's getting a major makeover for small tire action, it looks like. Small tire. Yeah. I think we're gonna run small tire with this. Some two seventy five stuff, drag radial. Really? Yeah. Maybe they're gonna go a couple ways with it, but yeah, is he doing it hemi or is he yeah. we don't they won't no, we don't know. Oh, sorry. No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's small block right. Ford. There you, you go. go. Well, Shane says it's a three J Z. Three J Z. <laughs> Uh, this is this is Craig Medcalf. Craig says the third recreation is coming, maybe the fastest if the kid handle handle it. Purple, unfortunately, gone. The purple's gone. <laughs> yeah, and he had to make it his own, and uh, he knows he how to lay down. A, he knows how to lay down a good good paint. So, oh yeah, not one I better. Have, I have him do a lot of hoods for us and stuff, and you know it's on trucks that really don't matter that much, but uh, they're always you know, car finish class, you know, car, oh, car quality finish, you know. Yeah. We're going to go see him tomorrow, I think, with the, some some hoods. Cool. Yeah, I'm mm. glad the car stayed around, you know what I mean? What's that? I'm glad this car stayed around here. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun to see him. Yeah. Yeah. Logan Logan says Shane has a pick for you. I don't know if he means me or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh Brendan Brendan says it will have a 2810.5 on it for good now with a big motor stuffed between the frame rails. There you go. Well, that'll be a handful. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hard enough time with a 3110.5, so yeah. That's a slick or that's a drag radio? It's probably a fro bracket radio. Okay, so it'll be on a super sticky track, and yeah, yeah, it shouldn't shake the tires because it's gonna right. cause it's a radial. Yeah, that was always the thing that made me. Oh, Stan, if if you came back with all the technology now, tires, injectors, <laughs> computers, I mean pumps, timers. I mean, forget. you know the the nitrous deal. I, I I so much. I learned a lot after I got out of nitrous uh, with the fuel injection. I don't know if you're gonna go up to any of the motor, motors or not, but uh, um, 
I, I did some stuff for this uh, Charlie Holub, and uh, we put fuel injection on it and uh, three stages <laughs> of nitrous, dry, dry, dry right. nitrous, and uh, Gary. we had 10 O2 what? sensors on it. Go to the next picture. He's asking you to go to the next picture. Which engine picture? Charlie's truck. What's that? He's talking about Charlie's truck motor. Oh, yeah. Go to Charlie Hobbs. Um, uh, truck. Right. This? No, that, that there is a, that went into a, uh, that was my first Hemi I built. That was kind of this fun. One. There you go. That's a 638, um, 12 degree rear Morrison heads. Um, inch lift camshaft. I mean, it's pretty nasty. Uh, two four bar two four barrel throttle bodies. Um, it was twelve twelve fifty or something to the on the dyno without nitrous, and then we were probably shoving probably six hundred to it. It wasn't super wild, but it was it was living. You know, very reliable, and. Um, <clears throat> But uh, I learned a lot about nitrous and uh, with that with that motor, and you know we just weren't hurting it. Once we got it kind of figured, I mean we heard it a few times, but once we figured out what air fuel ratio was happy and and figured out that not every cylinder's the same, by far, we correct some cylinders 20, 25 percent, and uh, some would be positive, some would be negative, and. Uh, it was stupid how much, how much uh, you had to offset different cylinders. We thought it was injectors, so we'd swap injectors around. Didn't make any difference. But you know, we got you know symmetrical ports basically. We got carburetor throttle bodies above each port. You know, equal length headers. I mean, I don't know how much more you could do to make it, you know, symmetrical. You know, all the cylinders the same, but. Uh, I don't know if it's a firing order or, or what it was, or too small of. I don't. I don't know. I didn't think we had too small of, uh, of uh, plenum, but um, it. Some cylinders just wanted more fuel than others, and uh, with those ten O two sensors, we could dial in the idle and give them all the idle the same. It idled so much cleaner when we were done. I mean, it idled smooth. It was kind of amazing how, how nice that thing idled. And then uh, we I learned that natural aspirator motors, I, I have the best luck not tuning those in VE. I tuned mm -hmm. that in Alpha N. And mm -hmm. It was all throttle position based. And it had so much better throttle response and so much more consistent. And, um, and uh, we was able to get that thing I mean, it drove nice. It didn't have, it never died. It never had any coughs. I mean, it drove nice. And uh, then, the, then when the nitrous come on, I did, I could adjust each cylinder to, to get them the same. And we just, we'd adjust with nitrous jets a little, but mostly it was just done with the fuel, you know, and the, it was all, all with the fuel injectors. And um, it, it, you know, the days of reading spark plugs kind of gone now with, with O2 sensors. All right. Um, we, oh, Kevin, he used to pull spark plugs out for me every pass. I mean, every pass <laughs> he was pulling spark plugs and I was reading computers and, and uh, somebody else was packing the parachute and or maybe I was doing that, but um, you know, you read the plug and you're just reading the last little bit, you know, cause his might be rich at the low end at one cylinder, but it might be lean at the top end on that same cylinder. So, you know, w w when are you reading the plugs? What RPM are you reading them at? <laughs> you know? Right. And uh, so with, with those O2 sensors on the headers, it made it, it made it so, uh, so much more accurate. And, you know, I used to have EGTs and uh, I tune off these EGTs and you'd add fuel and, and it, get hotter and then you take away fuel and it get colder. I mean, it, it didn't make sense. I mean, the, the temperatures, you know, you'd pull timing and it'd get hotter and you're actually safer. So, you, you know, you really didn't, um, 
I mean, it kind of helped you even them up a little bit, but it wasn't that accurate. <laughs> it wasn't that accurate. I ended up taking them off. Um, I don't know if it was Pat Musi or somebody told me they ran them for a while and then ended up taking them off. And I thought, ah, oh, you just don't know how to read them. You're not, you're not, you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he was right. They were, they were a waste of time. But, uh, after I had a few of them burn out, I didn't replace them. And, uh, but the O2 sensors, uh, that's, that's a game changer. You know, when mm. you're trying to tune a nitrous motor, if I'd had that back when I was racing, I hopefully would have not burned up near as many pistons <laughs> and um but i probably would have turned it up higher and then i would have broke stuff again but um the level i was at i, I i'm pretty sure i could have made that live with a good solid tune-up mm. but uh, you know how things are though if you got it to live and doing everything good and somebody beats you you're gonna figure out a way to turn it up you know so a arrow yeah <laughs> Hey, Stan, about the same time you're messing with Charlie's truck motors a lot, wasn't you uh, building some motors for uh, Dwayne Mills? I did a little bit for Dwayne. Um, I did his nitrous stuff, and then uh, I did some of his blower stuff. Uh, and um, we uh, we had a lot of problems with the uh, rocker arm studs pulling out of the heads, and, and uh, I don't know if we had too big a camshaft or if we just needed better rocker arm studs, but... Um, he had a couple motors and I was, I'd go back and forth freshening between the two. And, uh, but, uh, then, uh, he, he wanted to go Hemi. And, uh, so then he went with Proline and went, did the Hemi step. And, uh, but that was fine. Cause I mean, they could, they could support him better. And, and, uh, I wasn't no hard feelings, but, uh, uh, it's fun. I mean, he, he, uh, we learned a little bit about, how to tune stuff on him too but uh um like i said if i'd had the fuel injection back when i was doing it um you know chuck samuels had fuel injection early on and ran nitrous and blew stuff up at first and then later got it to living but you know i don't know if he had 10 o2 sensors or not i mean having one for each port and one for each bank you know and we let that motor correct i mean um <clears throat> I'd let it correct on the nitrous and you know, I did it. I, I finally made a spreadsheet that um, I, I'd plug in the horsepower that motor made and then whatever jets we put in it for each stage. And then I'd calculate a desired air fuel ratio for each level of nitrous and then kind of guessed around on, on some timing retard. I mean, that wasn't really scientific, but I, I could at least uh, if I changed, changed jets, I'd get come up with the, a baseline for where the timing should be but uh, the air fuel ratio deal was pretty accurate i mean i, I can't say it was wrong um because we like I say we didn't really hurt stuff and it would have been nice to really dial that in and see what it actually made the most power to as well as living um, but we were mainly just going to to keep it alive and still run decent you know but uh, I ran across somebody said what the desired air fuel ratio was on pure nitrous and and uh, kind of made a spreadsheet to calculate what what that interpolates to be with the percentage that you're using. And um, it, it worked pretty good. So I, lo I would love to have that back in the day. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Very cool. Well, let's go through some of these other motors you got. I know you've been doing a lot of motors on the side. Yeah, it was a lot of fun doing some of that stuff. Yeah. Took a lot of time. That's dad's uh, LS3. Um, he's got that in a 64 Chevy pickup. Uh, it's a four and a eighth or four and a quarter stroke. Um, I think it's four and an eighth. It's, it's 429 cubic inches. Uh, nice. Like, 12 to 1 compression, uh, nice uh, <laughs> low RPM torquey manifold there. Uh, <laughs> pretty big cam, and uh, 
uh, he complains that it don't, that it has an on-off switch. You know, it hits about five thousand RPMs and then it just turns on. And uh, he had a set of <laughs> kind of standard tires on it, and you'd, you'd be in third gear and you'd step on it. You think everything's going good, and all of a sudden you'd hit about five thousand RPM in third, and it started going sideways. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like kind of like a two-stroke motor. I mean, it really had a a switch to it. But uh, it's got Holly fuel injection on it, and cool. And uh, I tried to get him to put the ten o two sensors on it, but he didn't want to. He didn't want to do that. But uh, <laughs> so we never did. Never did dial that in as good as I'd like. But it runs. It runs pretty good. It's on Alpha N. It's it's not okay. on VE. It's on Alpha N. Right. Very cool. That's a buddy's uh, Chevelle. A 565 big block Chevy pump gas motor, um, hydraulic cam, which we later ended up going to a solid lifter cam because the hydraulic lifters, um, something broke on the lifter. I don't know if it's the guide bar or something, but they weren't very strong. And uh, we, so we later went to a mild solid lifter, solid roller cam, but it made 750 at um i don't know 6500 rpms or something on patterson's dyno but it was it was fun so that's that's my first 426 hemi is that shane's new motor that's shane's, that's shane's <laughs> yeah. new motor he said he's gonna have a blown hemi. what's that he said he's gonna have a blown hemi yeah there it when is that, when that guy gave me that stuff he told me he wanted 450 horsepower <laughs> I don't know how I can do that. <laughs> Jeez. And uh, cause it was going in a jet boat and he had a, he had a jet drive that was only rated for 450 horsepower or something. I don't know. Oh no. All this stuff. So we, we underdrove the crap out of it and, and, uh, and, uh, um, it's fuel. it's, it's old school fuel injection and, uh, old school magneto. And, um, uh, but it's pretty cool. Um, the day they dynoed it, I wasn't around and I didn't get a, I didn't get to take part in that. I, I would love to have been involved in that, but, uh, but, uh, it made way more than 450 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. I think it was, I mean, it was, it's just an 871 blower and, and it was on gasoline. Um, I think he might've went to, he might have went to E85, but I can't remember for sure. Like I said, I wasn't there when they dynoed it. Um, I think I think they might have went E85. That would have been the smartest move. But um, um, it was some aluminum heads and just stock stock pistons and stock stock rods, stock crank, stock stock everything. But it was fun. That was another um customers mud truck motor that was a uh, single four barrel and uh it was pretty radical when it was in the mud truck and uh, like 17 to 1 compression and, oh, and geez. Uh, i mean with a flat top piston i mean you know because it's a little you know when it's that big a motor and a small <clears> head <throat> it don't take much of a dome to get 17 to 1 compression <clears throat> and it, it was like you know with the single four barrel it was choking it big time and um it was like i don't know 1250 1300 horsepower um but they those guys got out of it and so they put it up for sale and they sold this guy from nebraska that wanted to put it in an airboat and wanted to know <laughs> if it would run on 93 octane gas <laughs> for an hour at a time I oh said, yeah no and no <laughs> so so we took it all apart and, and uh and he had a, one of them toilet bowl carburetors on it and i said well that's not going to run very good on your airboat and, and uh so we went to fuel injection and then we then i dropped the compression down to as low as i could get it um uh, with a big donut dish i mean the biggest dish i could just about get i think it was like 11 and a half to one maybe and then a baby camshaft um compared to what it had i mean it had over an inch lift before and and you know had 
two to one, two point one rocker. I know, I think one ninety five rockers or two to one rockers. And so any camshaft you get is going to give it a lot of lift. But I went with the smallest cam I could get, and and um, it still ended up with seven hundred some lift. <laughs> and um, uh, he had a he had a maximum RPM. We could only do fifty five hundred RPMs or something like that because of the speed of the prop and the speed of sound and whatever. <laughs> blow, the, blow the prop apart if he turned it too fast. So I had to make this super low RPM engine, which, you know, big cubic inch, it lends itself to that real well. And uh, it was fun. It, it made, he wanted a thousand horsepower. I think it made a thousand fifty at, on 90, 91 octane gas and uh, or 93. It was some mix that he has on the, on the river. It might have been 93 octane. Um, but it, 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 the torque, I mean, we just about couldn't get the maximum torque numbers on their dyno because the way it was pulling down, it we couldn't ever actually find the maximum torque. <laughs> but it, it was a lot of torque. Um, but it was it was a pretty motor. I, I wish I had a better picture. Uh, we powder coated everything on that motor. <clears throat> the oil was powder coated. The oil pan was powder coated two different colors. The all the front accessories were powder coated. I mean, I think I took 25 parts to the powder coater and had it all powder coated. I'd never spent money on that kind of stuff before. So <laughs> I was always about making horsepower, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a rowdy airboat. Holy cow. No, I don't think he's ever put the damn thing in. I mean, he had it all <laughs> ready to go and he was going to call me up there and we were going to tune it, you know, in the boat. I mean, we tuned it, we tuned it on the dyno and got it pretty well dialed in on the dyno but uh you know in the boat it's going to be a little different you know so um uh that was i don't know several years ago mm. and uh last i know he's never put it in it's like come on dude finish this up i want to <laughs> i want to go for a ride <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of the engine picks you sent okay um, and we get into this yeah, that was, my, that was my that was my uh, end of my racing career. Um, Got to have something to spend my money on, so yeah. I bought that, and uh, it was fun. And then uh, Whipple came out with this blower kit, so, <laughs> so I ended up putting a blow a Whipple blower on it, and uh, that that helped me learn a little bit more about tuning fuel injection stuff. I I beat the crap. I mean I tuned the crap out of that thing i used to get data logs for miles you know when i trying to get the air get the correction down to down to zero you know <laughs> i don't think that's ever possible but <laughs> it was a lot of fun it was <clears throat> it made probably 600 horsepower out of the flywheel i think it made 520 or something on a chassis dyno at some Dino shoot it at, out at the Hillsboro car dealership. It's cool. Just put it on there for fun. Then this came along, right? Yeah, that that was not intended. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> we were shop we were shopping for a car for my my stepson to go to school, and uh, so we were outside wandering around the edges of the lot looking at cheap cars, you know, and and uh, we were. You know, I started talking about stuff I'd had, and he goes, "We got a Hellcat inside." I go, "Really? You gotta go look at it." <clears throat> oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about Hellcats or Dodges, really. I mean, I kind of read about them a little bit, you know, when they came out, and was curious about them. And and uh, uh, anyway, I got inside. He goes, "Oh well, that's a red eye. That's not just a Hellcat. That's a red eye Hellcat." And uh, the interior wasn't just black. It was, you know, it's got a pretty brown interior and, uh, it's a, I think it's a good looking car and, sure. uh, sat in it. My head didn't hit the ceiling like it did in my, in my Camaro and my <laughs> wife could see over the, could see over the windshield like, like she couldn't because she could raise and lower the seats and she couldn't do that in my damn Camaro. And, and, uh, it was just a comfortable car and it's a really nice car to drive. And, uh, so thought about it over the weekend and a couple of days later we traded my Camaro off for that. So <laughs> <laughs> J 
jerked the blower off and and sold it to some guy and and they they uh, gave me the same money with or without the blower so it's like oh okay i know how it comes off so. <laughs> there you go but uh it's it's fun um i did i didn't know anything about tuning dodges because everything they do and on their tuning is kind of different um they don't talk about air fuel ratios of you know 12 and a half to one they talk about fuel air ratios so instead of having 12 to one air fuel you've got 0 0.08 fuel air and so it's totally different wow and um uh, so I, I paid to have this one tuned, um, and uh, I've, I've looked the tune over real close, and I've, and there's some things we're probably going to talk about getting corrected, um, but it, it, it runs really strong now. Um, took in a 10% uh, bigger bottom pulley on it, and uh, went to a 2.86 top pulley from a 3.3. And then um, went to 108 millimeter throttle body and had uh, Kong port the blower inlet snout. And the fuel system, uh, it already has two pumps on it. So all you did, all we did was put booster pumps on it and uh, 1300 pound injectors and converted it to E85. And it's on a true flex fuel tune. Um, mm. He's got the, the air, the, uh, alcohol t content reading on the dash um there's a gauge in the glove box you can open up and see and then he also makes it read on the dash i think it's on the it took the place of the air inlet temperature and then my ambient air temperature became my air inlet temperature so I, the only thing i don't like about it is i can't set, see how hot it is outside my my ambient <laughs> air pressure my ambient air temperature gauge is now my intake air temperature mm -hmm. but, uh, i didn't expect that but that's not the end of the world <laughs> you, know, I, you know i stick my hand out the window yeah but, um, <laughs> but it's it's kind of a kind of a beast um that that's sitting there with the 17 inch wheels i put on it and the mickey thompson uh et street r tires and that's probably a necessity to drive around on a warm day because the other drag, the NATO drag radials just really don't hold it back very well, <laughs> especially in the cold. You don't want to drive that car in the cold because the tires don't hook up and it makes more power. Yeah. And uh, the first day I, uh, when I went to get it, I was driving around Chicago and uh, on a back road that I didn't know very well. And I just going 60 mile an hour. I want like, to see what this thing does. So I floored it. You know, it kicked down to third gear and went sideways. And it's like, okay, <laughs> that's enough. Put it in the box. We're going to take it home. <laughs> it runs. Kurt said it's just a work car. That's right. I drive it to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I drove it, to, drove it to Kurt's and had some welding done the other day. So it's it's fun. But it's on, it's on E85 now. But you can run it on 91. It's a flex fuel tune, so it'll run on night. If I want to go far, you know, on a long distance, and I can't get to 85, then um, uh, you can run it on 91. It'll adjust for it. It drops the boost. It boost bleeds. Mm -hmm. It only makes like three pounds of boost when it when it's on 91. When it's below 60% ethanol, it, it, there's that's kind of a point where he decides that's not enough ethanol to run 22 pounds of boost. So. <laughs> Cool. It made 14 pounds when it was stock, and now it makes 22. Or it, it may make more than that. I think that's where the map sensor maxes out. But because uh, um, it, it 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 it's hard to say what it really makes. I don't know if we. I need to look and see if we have a two and a half bar map sensor, or if it's a three bar map sensor. I don't really yeah. know. I guess. But uh, it's for a stock engine. I mean. Stock engine with pulleys. I mean, that's basically what it is. I mean, stock bottom end, stock heads, stock cams, stock, stock, you know. The red eye's got a bigger camshaft. It's got kind of a gnarly cam. It's like 225, 240 or something on the cam. It's it's pretty big for a stock engine uh, at 50,000s duration. 
And uh, so that's one nice thing about the red eyes. You don't really even talk about cam changes. You just talk about more boost. Yeah, <laughs> more boost. That's it. And uh, it's got all the boost now. Kurt says that sensor was maxed out for a bit on that rip that we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, prob that's probably right. I don't, I don't really know what the what the boost it makes. I think <laughs> I think the gauge only goes to twenty. I look. <laughs> mm. There's, it's got all kind of gauges in that car. Um, it's got an air fuel ratio gauge, a boost gauge, every temperature thing you could come up with, intake air. Um, blower or uh, intercooler temperatures and um and then it's got graphs that you can graph out the a dyno curve and a torque curve and you can graph out your boost curve and your air fuel curves and i mean it's it's got like a built-in data logger on it it gives you wow. zero to 60 and zero to, you know zero to quarter mile times and and ets and nice um if you don't spin the wheels <laughs> <laughs> that kind of gets ruined when you spin the wheels. <laughs> All kinds of fun gadgets. But I drove it today with the with the seventeens on for the first time. It was nice out, and uh, it kind of started to hook up in second towards the end of second. Sorry about that. And. Uh, it, it, it hooks up in third real well with those tires. But it's all you need on the street. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what 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 I do with more power is just gonna spin more. Yeah. Spin the tires more. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'll probably learn a little bit more about that tuning and fix a few things on it. Fix some of the cold starting and fix some of the minor, minor drivability issues it has. But he, so got you, pretty, he got it pretty close though. And so that's where you put on the dyno there. You had somebody do that for you. Yeah, that was a Satari tuning in uh, by Chicago. Is um, that the video that you sent? Yeah, yeah. That well, was up in Chicago. We'll play that right now. <laughs> It starts making that sound and my wife's listening she gets a little excited <laughs> <laughs> she don't, she don't like it when i get get rowdy with that thing <laughs> yeah uh are you gonna bring that to arc city maybe this year oh maybe I'd, I'd like to i'd like to see it on the track somewhere just to see what it does I mean, yeah i've got everything for it i mean the suspension is not is still pretty stock i put a I put a, uh, oh, a cradle cradle support to support the rear cradle from twisting so much, but sure, it could use a lot of uh, upgrades. I mean, if I wanted to spend the money, it's just yeah, send it back to Kurt for some more welding. Is it a street car? Is it a race car? You know, <laughs> sure, sure. Yep. Uh, Phil said he's got a coyote waiting for you if you want to catch a lane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> he makes some power up that thing. Um, yeah. What's he, 1300 or more? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I had over here, we did a little uh, transmission conversion. So, but I know he's to get it out as well. Well, if he wants to drive it to California and back, I'll race him over in California. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see who gets, we'll see how that works out. There you go. <laughs> what is the uh, transmissions? Are they like, eight speeds or something yeah that's an eight speed yeah hmm. yeah yeah first is about a 40 mile an hour 35 mile an hour gear seconds about a so 75 or so maybe thirds about 105 fourths about 140 fifths 155 or 60 sixth is 203 or four dang seventh and eighth are just for cruising <laughs> Yeah. Is that a chart or do you know that for a fact? Huh? Is that a chart or do you know that for a fact there? I don't, I haven't seen the 203. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 202, 201. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been up there. I've been up there faster than I should admit to. So we'll just sure. leave it at that. But, <laughs> but I haven't maxed it out. And now, mm -hmm. now it'd probably go into seventh and 
you know, go beyond that. Yeah. Wow. Because, I mean, it's got enough torque to pull seventh. Sure. That thing made, I should have sent it to the dyno chart on that thing. <clears throat> it made uh, 900 foot pounds of torque at 2,500 RPMs. Jeez. And then it made 980 foot pounds of torque somewhere around four to 5,500 probably. I mean, just, I mean, you want to talk about a flat torque curve. It's just as flat as flat as can be. Yeah. And then it made uh, 1,011 to the tires at 6,700. Cool. Man, that's super cool. That's Dude. through stock exhaust, stock catalytic converters. Oh, wow. Stock. That's incredible. Stock intake, stock, I mean. Just a work car, geez. Just yeah. a work car. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I, I drive it to work quite a bit. I mean, when it's mm. nice. Yeah. I drive it in the rain or nothing. But What year is this, Dan? 2020. 2020. Yeah. I mean, I've had it for, I went, you know, I, I had it for a while before I screwed with it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to, get it, wanted to get it paid for. <laughs> before, I, <laughs> before I tore it up. There you go. So uh, just going back to racing for a second, Stan, like, uh, you know, you, you travel quite a bit. What would you say your favorite racetrack it was to race on? I always liked Tulsa. I mean, cause of the midnights and, and uh, it just seemed to have a pretty good track. Um, I like Oklahoma city was pretty good. Um, I did a lot of racing in San Antonio and Houston. Those were nice tracks. Um, Jackson, Tennessee, that was my favorite little eighth mile track. Whatever special sauce that guy used on the track, he wouldn't tell us what it was, but um, that my car would go, um, what was it? It would pretty much go straight, except at that track, it always went left. I had to, I had to overcompensate the shit out of the suspension to keep it from going left because it pulled so hard. And, um, that was that was probably my favorite little eighth mile track. Right on. Me and me and Kevin went to that track the first time uh, after a race in Wichita on Friday night. We we raced some. We did some. I can't remember the results of the. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure we won the race at Wichita. <clears throat> and then we drove all night um, uh, to uh, get to Jackson, Tennessee, and they, all all everybody else qualified Friday night in the in the in the dark. And uh, I get there Saturday afternoon, and the sun's bearing down, and we get a. It's our turn to qualify, you know. And uh, I laid down a. I don't remember what the time was. Probably a seven sixty or eighty or I don't. I don't know what the time was back then, but uh, enough to be number one qualifier, and then to go on and win the race. <laughs> so it was fun. That was a good weekend. Heck yeah. Oh, there you go. Is that, is that these trophies for that in 1999? Yeah, 99. Jackson. <clears throat> okay. They give you one for qualifying and one for winning. So. Okay. And 5,000 bucks. So nice. That was, the, that was the good part. This is, this was Shane. Shane says, he, any stories about Tennessee you want to share? Uh, Maybe Shane, I, you got some stories. I, don't know. I, I, I remember that when I, when I went up to, to the track, to the starting line, uh, the guy I was racing was asking if we wanted to split it. And I said, I didn't have any idea what he was talking about. And we split it. What do you mean split it? I mean, I, I, I drove, you know, overnight to get here. I, I why would I want to split this? You know? <laughs> and I guess that was kind of custom back there. Cause they had big, big, you know, big payouts for first and, and not so big a payouts for second. So they'd always want to, you know, want to split, I guess. And, and, uh, Hell, I didn't know no better, so I just said, "No, nah, <laughs> we'll just we'll just race," and uh, it worked out. It worked out well. <laughs> so, yeah, took that money back to Kansas. That's right. I mean, I needed that to fund the race car. So, <laughs> sound like a good weekend. Doubling up. And don't believe in splits. <laughs> that's, that's Shane. Yeah, I, I've had two or three other times where they wanted to do that, and uh, I, I I was always confident enough that. I didn't want to do it. So I just, just roll the dice and, you know, I think it, 
I think whenever that situation come around, I think I always won. I mean, I've lost some races, but I think on those particular times when somebody wanted to split, I, I think I won. But, uh, <clears throat> well, you you sent a picture with a uh, a pile of trophies. Yeah, <laughs> and and I kind of went through them, and you sent some separately also. Yeah, I'll kind of start at the beginning of what I got. 2000 MSRA, MSRA champion. You know, that was, that was great. The MSRA, that was a yep. great deal. <clears throat> we didn't really have any place to race. And, uh, that was, that was, that was the start of, you know, heads up racing around here. Right. And, uh, that was a, I, I really, you know, thank those guys for putting that on. They probably caught a lot of crap and people chewing them out for different rules or different this or that. And they had some turnout issues and they had some, funding issues and you know you know tried to race at Topeka and I think they got screwed over on that deal and yeah but uh, that was I, I really I'm really happy they did that because it gave us something to do you know some some purpose and um, so that was that was fun I agree well said yep clash of the titans world champion super street and then we yeah. talked about this couldn't really make out what year it was yeah it says 08 but i don't think i raced in, <clears> in that class so it was probably 05 i won i know i've got the trophies for 04 i'm not sure what happened in 06 this is uh, 2004 clash of the titans yeah. super that, street that's probably Channel. that's probably my favorite uh, trophy that, that picture of my car on there yeah that's it's, great it's it's kind of done to look like a painting or something but yeah oh, that's a cool that's a cool trophy <laughs> i enjoyed the class races that, that was a lot of fun yeah i mean they 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 had you know tulsa oklahoma city houston san antonio you know all i mean the houston and san antonio was a long trip but i mean it, it, they were good tracks i mean it, it were it was a nice nice organization yeah oh freddie yeah this is a October 1998 Super Chevy Gainesville Raceway Super Street runner up. Yeah, that was in Florida. Boy, that was a long try, long drive. <laughs> Man. I don't know how many flat tires we had on the trailer that, that race, but we'd be driving along and somebody'd point to the side of my trailer and, and I thought, oh, but I know what they're pointing at. <laughs> <Good tire. laughs> I have to go alongside the road and change a tire. Yeah. 16 inch wheels that was the best investment i ever did on that trailer that yeah. that put an end to those stupid tire blowouts you could get a heavier great tire and and that just that was a huge improvement yeah Do you know who you're racing the final there on that one which one's this now nah, back it up one gary on oh. the florida deal oh in florida <clears throat> yeah he was somebody i should have known but i can't remember um uh uh john I, I i had him kind of covered he was a pro charger guy he was a pro charger guy um johnny gullet <laughs> maybe i'm, I'm getting sure. some intel but i <laughs> it was on video it was on it was on the tv or something on some espn yeah. three or yeah. four or whatever yeah it was i remember that and uh i blew the damn engine up uh oh, halfway down the track i think i was I think I was limited to one kit and uh, normally I was in the forties on my jets and, and I think I was up in the fifties on that one. Yeah. And uh, so I had a big jet in there and it, it was kind of in territory. I was unknown. Yeah. And um, I was trying to, trying to keep up, you know, with something I was probably out, you know, out horsepower with that pro charger, but uh it uh, it ran well. It surprised yep. a lot of blower cars. Oh yeah, I think Yurst Yurst. Uh, he's out of Arizona. He he came up to one of the Clash the Titan races. Freddie Freddie recruited him to come up and and he was going <laughs> to take my money. Yeah, and, uh, he changed <laughs> the rules for me too. He, that's when he told me I couldn't run two kits no more. I had to only run one kit. <laughs> and uh, so it's like okay. So we turned up the first kit and and uh, and put Yearst on the trailer. <laughs> so 
<laughs> after we after we went up there to get my check, he goes, "Well, I guess that didn't work." <laughs> <laughs> Another stand rule, because he was trying to he was trying to make it so I didn't win every one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> So back to that one, 2006 Mako Outlaw 10-5 runner-up and 2006 Tulsa Raceway Park Shootout Series first place. Yeah, I don't really remember much. To Mako, was that Holloway's <clears throat> deal? Yeah, that? that would have been Jeff's deal, yeah. yeah. He had he had a couple of races. I didn't follow that series. I, was, I think I was doing the other, you know, doing so much with the Clash that don't think I did too many of those races. Um, yeah. Dad might have chased a few of them. Um, yeah. He raced at um, the Missouri, Oklahoma, or Missouri, Kansas border. What's that town? Uh, Mocan. Mocan. Yeah, I've never, I've never raced at Mocan before. Um, so that was one of the places he raced. And um, but yeah, I. I don't remember much about that one. Yeah, yeah. And we got this. You told us the magazine this was in. Uh, yeah, that was in a, what was it called? World's Fastest Cars. I, I think that's, is that Chris Derrick on the cover there? Yeah. yeah. Michael, Michael Carr. Carr, yeah. But yeah, it was just kind of cool. <clears throat> yeah, a magazine of some kind, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Tulsa Raceway 2006. Cool. So that would have been my outlaw 10 5 car. Oh, yeah. That would have been the new car. And like I said, I was I wasn't uh, as successful in that car as I was the old one because <clears throat> I was trying to race against turbo and blower cars that were <laughs> making more power than me. <laughs> I was making two thousand horsepower and they were making three thousand. Yeah. Ooh. That that's all we got for for the pictures. Okay. That you sent. Yeah. Really cool stuff. No, actually there's some other stuff. We're about at the two hour mark, but like some of the expense breakdowns you sent and oh uh, yeah. That that had a nice history of uh all the different races I went to the, those years. And we can look uh, that up if you want to, we can. And there's one other picture that Rodney found. Oh, oh. <laughs> you, want, you want to see that? I don't care. Some more, was, some more racing. That was after <laughs> after the car racing. <laughs> I got into bike racing. Yeah, and, uh, lost a bunch of weight and and uh, <clears throat> decided I might as well use this fitness I have to do something. And yep. uh, that was a eighty mile gravel ride in the middle of summer. Wow, they called it the death ride. But uh, there was, a, I don't know how many people went to the hospital from dehydration. So it was, it was, it was What serious. was the location where at? Um, oh, this is Flint Alma, Hills. Alma, okay. Kansas. Flint wow. Hills. It was, wow. south of, it was south of Emporia there. Uh-huh. Just out in the Flint Hills. And I was on my old cheap mountain bike and... Some of these guys were showing up with what looked like, you know, road bikes. And I, I didn't know no better, but they were kind of actually converted into to what they call gravel bikes today. And, uh, but I had my heavy old, heavy old mountain bike and uh, strong legs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hell, I won that thing. So that was fun. Yeah. There's probably rules against you for that now, too. No. <laughs> 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 no, I I, uh, I raced in some uh, some of the more professional races and figured out that uh, I'm not near as strong as I, as I, as some of those guys. <laughs> so, sure. Hey, you want to you want to look very hard? You'll find some bikers that'll just kill you. So they've got that Emporia deal every year, the Dirty Kanza, and it's. They've got a hundred mile deal and a two hundred mile deal and I think a three hundred and fifty mile deal. Dang. I mean it's just insane. They got people coming from all over the world on that thing. And you know, I was probably running sixteen mile an hour on the gravel when I was doing my thing. And the guys that are winning that two hundred mile deal, they're running 
they're running over 20 mile an hour on gravel for 10 hours. So they're, they're studs. Yeah. <laughs> they are studs. Man. I'm out on that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm out on the, I mean, 80 miles <laughs> is long enough. That your ass is so sore by the time you get done, your hands are numb, your feet yeah, are asleep. Your, butt, your butt's numb. Yeah, you got to get your butt, you know, accustomed to that, you know. So, Stan, uh, you know, after to this part of the program, uh, we kind of talked to uh, just kind of looking back, people that you want to thank along the way. You know, you've raced for however many years. I know you had a, one or two people that went with you everywhere and uh, helped you out. You know, this is time to give them a shout out or if you like. Sure, sure. Well, Phil went along with me for some of the early races. I mean, he was he was always uh, – with me on some, you know, and then I, I think we figured out in 99, um, uh, when we went to Jackson, Tennessee, I think that's when Kevin Steele started going with me and, uh, he pretty much became a, a staple for the next, you know, eight years or so. And, uh, you know, he, he drove a lot of miles and I could, you know, let me sleep when I needed to. And, and, uh, he was there helping me at nights, taking motors in and out and, and, uh, getting the car ready. And, you know, so I, I don't know that I could have done it without, without his help because it's just a lot of work. I mean, I look back now and go, I don't know how I did that and had a job and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you know, I'd stay up till three in the morning, putting the motor together. And, um, then, uh, Dean, Dean Snelling went with us a lot. He, he was helping too. He, he'd always do, He'd do the nitrous bottles, keep track of the temperatures and, you know, pressures and, you know, because, you know, I'd be, I'd, I'd get them turned, I'd get the heaters turned on and then somebody start talking to me and I'd lose, you know, I yeah. wouldn't be paying attention. The next thing you know, the bottles are 1200 degrees. And um, so it was nice to have him there to do some of that stuff. Sure. Um, you know, Don Dial, he was always building my you know he built the last car and a couple of variations of that car um i don't know if kurt helped me i mean kurt's helping me a lot now on, on work i do now but uh i think he might have went with with me to a few races and and uh, uh we're more close now than we were back then probably he was a competitor back then so sure <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Can't be too close to your competitors, you know. You don't want to give them the edge. <laughs> 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 only help them as much. Only help them a little, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Zach Weedle, he used to race me, and I I did his motors, and and we had almost the same motor and almost the same converters, and and you know we set him up to where he was just about exactly the same as me. But I don't know, some reason I rather I always beat him. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to hold out on him, but I wasn't going to give him any chassis help, you know? Sure. I was only going to give him the, the motor, I could, the best motor I could give him and the best, you know, training, training I could give him and that kind of stuff. But, uh, uh, I'm sure there's guys I'm forgetting Jason Bernhardt with, with me do a few races. Uh, um, I don't want to be, step on anybody hurt anybody's feelings by not saying their names but i i can't quite remember everything back in the, you know from that far back oh yeah it was a long time ago yeah yeah seems like the older i get the less i remember <laughs> so, <laughs> same here <laughs> did you enjoy racing with your dad you know when you guys were yeah it's fun it's fun and and we're still in you know he's still in the business and so we're we're still working together and uh um it's nice to nice to be in business with him and, yeah um, i'm i've got a more leadership role in the business now and he's sure. kind of taking it easy but he's still out there if i get a transmission in he's out there building transmissions wow. <laughs> he does 13 speeds and 18 speeds and 10 speeds and does, How them, does them all the time i threw a new one on him a 12 speed automatic here about six months ago and never seen one before and it's totally different and yeah and uh the only service manual i had was on the computer <laughs> so here, here i got this 88 year old man uh scrolling through a computer to try to find the 
you know, the information on how to take this thing apart, you know. Oh, that's awesome. And, and, he, and he, he had to read it because there was some stuff <clears> that was so different that you had to read some of it. Yeah. And uh, But he got it done and it worked and it's not come back. So there you go. Wow. I hope I can still read when I'm 88. Okay. <laughs> Man, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's pretty cool. Um, Do you more. miss driving the race cars? Oh, it was fun. I mean, that feeling you got when it when you shift into second gear on that turbo car and it just slams you back in the seat even further. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty cool. Um, the nitrous car, you know, the hard hit off the line it gave you, you know, that was always fun. But then, you know, once you once you were out 60 feet on that car, you could kind of look around and eat popcorn, you know, <laughs> but uh, it was pretty well. Wait for not, the pistons to fall out of it. <laughs> yeah, just just keep keep looking at, looking over looking at the t looking in your mirror seeing what smoke was coming out you know <laughs> but uh yeah I, I had all the nitrous in within five tenths of a second wow. so you know after five tenths of a second if you stayed on the track you know and the, and the tires might be in the air for the first you know second second and a half i mean sometimes it, sometimes it'd carry the wheels across the 60 foot but usually it i kept the front tires pretty low and um so once you once you got that all out of your you know out of its system you were pretty much just along for the ride and looking over and seeing what the turbo guy was doing next to you <laughs> hopefully he was staying behind you <laughs> <laughs> you drive by but uh in the turbo deal that was a whole new whole new animal sure it, it'd break loose at It'd, it'd break loose at the finish line. I mean, it'd break loose anywhere down the track. You didn't know. And uh, so it, it was a little, it was a little unnerving. I mean, to be honest, it was a little scary. Sure. And, uh, I got a t-shirt I want to buy that I seen on Facebook. It said, uh, if your car's not, if your car doesn't scare you just a little bit, it's not fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, right. that's, pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty accurate. <laughs> So if it's not fast enough, it don't if it don't scare you a little bit, it's not fast enough. There you go. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right, Gary, I'm good over here. I don't know if you got any more questions. No, I'm two hour mark. We got. Yeah, I'm I'm good here. All right. Well, appreciate you coming in, staying and hanging out with yeah. us. Yep. Appreciate your time. Back, Thank you. Back a lot of old memories. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're a, you're a legend around here, and we appreciate oh. your time tonight. Yeah. About that. <laughs> <laughs> old washed up has been. I'll listen to you. Well, hey, I seriously appreciate you taking all my calls. I I know I still call you to help me with stuff, so I appreciate that. Thanks for coming on as yeah. well. You pretty well got your own shit figured out now, though. So, yeah, I appreciate that. But, you know, you helped me get there. You know what I mean? And I, you know, I, uh, I'll be honest with you, too. You know, you go into such detail. I have to write notes. I have to go study and come back, you know, because I get that time with you and I, I, I want that 30 minutes. And when you're talking, I'm taking notes, recording, whatever, <laughs> because I might not get it right then, but I'm going to go back and review. And then I'll yeah. No, and so it definitely helped me from where I am today. Yeah, I would I would call some of my mentors back in the day and I'd take notes, you know. I'd Mike Moran was a big mentor of mine back in the day when I was running nitrous and then um he, he was he was a lot of help. I mean, he's the one that taught me not to run, you know, that I couldn't run twenty five thousand spark plug gap with big nitrous tune up. Right. And uh once I once I narrowed my gap down to seventeen thousands um, all of a sudden I could run a lot richer mixtures right. and, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't miss out before I I'd try to run just a little on the rich side and it start popping and banging and shooting flames. And, and, uh, once I narrowed the gap up, then I could run rich and safe and, and all of a sudden things were living so much better, you know, and then, then you just turn it up and go faster and it blow it up again. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then you try to figure out that tune up, you know? Yeah, that's that's Shane. Shane here says set the bar for all of us. No, oh, thanks. Yeah, uh, well said there. This is Brian Hesterman. 
Brian says he has your last motor from Charlie and Mills wants you to tune it. Charlie and Mills. Okay. Brian Brian Hesterman making that comment. Okay, he's got Charlie Hollub's. Charlie Hollub's old motor. Yeah. Hmm. yeah we 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 kind of Charlie wrecked his truck and then we regrouped and. Um, Mills had this 706 that he never ended up using and so all of a sudden Charlie wanted that one and then so we started putting it together and then things didn't fit and then my schedule and my time and I kind of I, I never did get the damn thing finished sure. and uh, so then he bought he bought the thing and Charlie got out of got out of racing but uh, I feel bad that I didn't ever finish that thing but Right now, my workload is so different than it was when I was racing. Um, when I was racing, I was just selling trucks, and and my days were kind of boring actually selling trucks. <laughs> and uh, now, I'm on the phone. I'm I'm doing the shop. I'm I'm running. The, I'm doing the general manager, and then I'm selling trucks. And the phone is just in my ear all day long. And then. And then I'm working late to get caught up and uh, do stuff I never got done during the day. And so I, I just, by the time I get home, I don't feel like working. <laughs> you know, I don't feel like working on a motor out in the garage, you know? So <laughs> it just, uh, I don't know how I would, I don't think I could do racing anymore. I mean, yeah. the time commitment that's involved for, for what you guys do is more than I'm, more than I'm willing to do right now. I guess you get old and you get tired when you get home. So yeah. I get home. I just want to sit on the couch and watch some dumb show and then go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate your time tonight. Two hours. I mean, that, thank you very much. And, All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed my old has been stories, but. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Stan. All right. All right. We'll, uh, we'll catch you later and enjoy the rest of your evening. All right. We'll see you guys. Thanks, see you, Sam. Sam. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you a lot. All right. Bye. Oh, that was great. Man, he was he was good. Good stories. Good man. Just a lot of the stuff you started with, you know, in your in your show we did, and then stories from back in the day. And yeah. Yeah. Man, that's cool. Good, good local guy, you know, to have a <clears throat> You know, the night in 2017, when I got my car back together, I, I called Stan. I want to go to the race this Friday. And I called him on like a Tuesday and want to come over Wednesday night to his place to uh, just have him look the car over and look the tune up overs with the big stuff. And he moved things around. You know, he's supposed to go to a ball game. And we went to that and I met him at his shop at like 8 p.m. And we were there like three hours and just going through everything, the 7531, the big stuff, all that stuff back then the AMS and just taught me what to look for, what not to do, stay, stay out of this mess with this. And yeah. Then again, you know, just uh, brought him to the track a few times. And so can't say enough. Like Shane said, he set the bar for all of us. So. Yep. <clears throat> we're, we're probably all lucky. He's not still racing. He'd be kicking our ass. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Imagine like be, talking hey, about. Go ahead. He'd be kicking our ass and we'd be learning from him too. Oh Yeah. But like if he had the injectors and the fuel pumps and you know all the fuel tech and all that back then, you know he's talking about making his own boost controllers. And yeah, running spreadsheets and gee, my knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. One time we were hanging out getting dinner or something. He told me he wrote his first computer per, uh, code in college or something back in the eighties. <laughs> it's like shaking my head. But anyway, all right, all right. We can go ahead and wrap it up if you're good. Yep. We'd uh, go over Get here our, and grab our yeah. sponsors, <clears throat> our partners. Uh -oh, there it is. Mid America Dragway, Ultra Color Collision Repair, Sandlin Iron and Metal Auto Salvage, and Harry Street Carpet. Thank nice. you for being great partners in 2024. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yes, yes. We appreciate that. It's good seeing that support and, uh, don't forget to go over to our uh, YouTube channel, Facebook, give yep. us a like, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. It keeps, every time we do a show, we get three or four 
more. So still putting videos out. So having a good time and uh, we'll come back next Sunday and uh, talk about radio uh, roundup and, and that, that adventure would be nothing but a good time. This is Robin Foster. Awesome guy. Good show. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, good show comment. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Stan was great. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yep. We pick up a, we pick up a few subscribers every week. And uh, the next time we come back Sunday, if we're not, <laughs> if, if we don't sleep, uh, half the day away on Sunday yeah. when we get back, we'll be uh, Take a quick nap. <laughs> you know, you know, maybe there's even, uh, uh, we're going to take pictures and stuff and video and do what we can for a lot of fun stuff to talk about from radio roundup, but there's probably even a chance that we won't make it on Sunday night. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Because I mean, you know, from Thursday morning on, it's going to be, you know, full grind, no sleep, driving back Sunday. We'll see how it yep. plays. Drive back Sunday, unload everything, put everything away. Yeah. So there's a chance that Sunday night won't happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all right. We'll, so, we'll get it next time it does. I think we'll just put a note out to everybody, let them know. Yep. Yep. That'll be fun. What? But but the next one will be Radio Roundup Good Stuff. It'll yeah. be uh we're going to take some great pictures, be some super awesome cars down there. Oh yeah. So be a good time. Yeah. Nothing but a good time. Nothing but a good time. Hmm. Oh, you're yawning. I'm yawning. I didn't get a nap today. <laughs> <laughs> didn't sneak a nap. All right. Well, Gary, great show. Yes, sir. Great show to you, man. Uh, Stay in the man. Check it off. You know what I mean? Got him. Yeah. Cool, cool. Got him. All right. Well, let's do the high five. All right. Ready? I'm ready. Three. Got it. And catch this glass comment here. Oh, I got to shut it off. <laughs> it runs continuous. Okay. Let's catch this comment here. This is Mark Westmoreland. Great show, guys. And is absolutely a legend. That's right. He is. Thanks for watching, Mark. Man. Glad it all worked out. You know, his time is, you know, not a lot of it. So glad it all worked out. Been yeah. working on that one for a while. Yep. It uh it got worked out. Yeah. Go cool, cool. All right, you ready to go? Let's uh ready to go. Let's load up and head to Texas. All right, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> all right, everybody, thank you for jumping on and joining. And uh we'll see you next time whenever that is. We'll keep you posted. Thank you. And thank you, Rod. Thank you, Gary. See ya.